Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today we're going to be talking about Bibles and Bible translations and Bible study. It's one of my favorite topics. Let's go ahead and get into it. Vegan Prepper. Vegan Prepper. All right, this might be a weird video to have on this channel, <laughs> but for whatever reason, when I'm thinking about what video do I want to make um, and I'm praying about it, uh, this is the only thing that comes up and so I've decided to just listen and do it. <laughs> so hopefully some of you find it enjoyable and if you are one of those people who have found some great value out of this video, please let me know down below. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to specifically discuss um, which translations I use most when I'm doing my Bible study, whether or not I believe a literal translation is necessary for Bible study, um, the advantages of a, oh no, sorry, the purpose of Bible study, and then what are the advantages of a physical Bible over a digital Bible. And so let's go ahead and just get right into it. So for my own personal study, I use the New King James Version. It is my favorite study. It's my favorite translation personally. It's an essentially literal translation. That's what it's known as. There are basically different types of Bible translation, and each type has a certain level of accuracy to the original text. Um, and so the essentially literal translation is basically as close as you can get to the original text um, and have it still be readable in English. Um, because obviously when you're translating languages, you will have to, so for instance, certain languages won't have certain prepositions. Certain languages won't say the certain, you know, like, so like words are added just for clarity in English. And that is basically the only difference that has been made in an essentially literal translation from the original text. And so that is the one that I prefer to use, uh, the New King James Version. Um, there are several essentially literal translations out there that are all really good. A lot of people prefer all kinds of different ones. Um, the NASB, um, for instance, is one of them. I think um, the ESV, English Standard Version, uh, the King James Version, the original King James Version, um, and yeah, like a bunch of kind of essentially literal translations are out there uh, to choose from. And so yeah, many of them are great. If you just Google um, essentially literal Bible translations, you will find some. And you will find, um, you can find them also on BibleGateway.com. I will be linking that down below so that you can go through and explore different translations um, and see if there's one that you really like. Like if you don't have one that you really like yet, uh, you can go through and find one that really, uh, speaks in the way that gets you enticed to spend time in the word. And I think that that's the main, the main thing. So for clarification though, on the new King James version, and sometimes I, I just like to know a little bit more about what the original words are saying. I will go to my amplified Bible. So this is the amplified classic. This book, this Bible is about eight or nine years old. So it just says AMP, but at this point it is known as the amplified classic AMPC. It's the old one. There is an updated version of the amplified. I can't remember what that one is, if that one's a literal or if that one's a dynamic equivalent translation. So the dynamic equivalent translations are also pretty close to the original text, but they're a little bit, they're like one step past the essentially literal ones where they still try to stay as true as they can to the original words and meaning, but they might add a little bit of extra clarification to make it a bit more readable for um, modern uh, English speakers <laughs> specifically. Um, the New International Version, NIV, is one of the most popular translations out there, and that is a dynamic equivalent translation, and many, many people really love that one and get a lot out of it. Um, and I can't remember if the AMP is literal or dynamic equivalent. Um, I'll just put it on the screen once I find it. Uh, but this is the one I like to go to because it, um, it has clarification of the original language. So extra words will be there um, that tell you more about what is actually being said in the original text. The other thing that I really love about the AMP over other translations is that oftentimes in the New Testament, you will have scripture references taking you back to the Old Testament. Uh, but in the AMP, you have scripture references in the Old Testament that point you to the New Testament. And I really love being able to cross-reference both ways, not just from the New Testament to the Old, uh, but from the Old Testament to the New. And I, I really do love that. That's another reason I truly love this Bible. And so this is my like my second most used. This is the one I use the absolute most. This one is, is pretty close. Sometimes I just decide I'm gonna read this one instead of the other one. Um, for whatever reason, but I, I do really appreciate having both of those 
as a resource. Uh, the final one is when I just sort of want kind of a different experience and I just sort of want to read more than really study because there's like a difference between just reading and studying. We'll kind of get to that in a little bit uh, is the Passion Translation. This is a fantastic kind of newer translation. It's one of the newer uh, paraphrase tra type translations. As far as I understand it, he translated the the translator translated from Aramaic translations of the New Testament. And so Aramaic is in and of itself a much more expressive and emotional language than Greek. Um, Aramaic is what Jesus was speaking when he spoke. Um, and it's the language that the apostles were speaking as they were on earth in Judea. Um, and so that is kind of a really interesting experience of the word to have it in this beautiful kind of almost flowery emotional language. I really love this translation. It, it's it's just a really great experience. It helps make the 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 word kind of more. I don't want to say relatable, but it's like more. Um, it just draws you in. I, I can't say. I can't explain exactly. But I, I really do love this translation. You can check that one out, I believe, on like Bible.com. I'll find where you can read some of the Passion Translation and you can check that out. Um, the entire Bible is not translated yet. Uh, this is a New Testament with Psalms, Proverbs, and Song of Songs. Um, so this is just the New Testament. But um, eventually they will have the whole Bible. And once they do, I will get one of those as well. But I do really love that translation as well. So those are the three that I mainly use. Um, and so, yeah. Um, Oh yeah, and I, I actually did discuss the three types of translations, the essentially literal, the dynamic equivalent, which is kind of close, but still a little bit more clarified, like the NIV, and then a paraphrase. And a paraphrase is where basically the translator has taken the original text and then done quite a lot of um, clarification type words um, to sort of make it extremely understandable and just super easy to read. Um, that would be like the New Living Translation the NLT, which is another one I like to read sometimes, uh, the message translation, which is also a fun one to read sometimes. Um, and then like the passion translation, those are all paraphrases. Um, and so those are kind of like your three levels of Bible translations. And then you can sort of pick which one you like the best, honestly, <laughs> is really what I say. Um, because like, like I say, um, it's another question being is a literal translation necessary for Bible study? Um, I would say no with a caveat. Um, so essentially, yes. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, because there is definitely a difference, I believe, between truly studying the word and reading it. Um, and so it also kind of depends on what, what you're wanting to do that day. So study is when you're diving into scripture and you're seeing what is this saying? What does this mean? And, you know, really pulling out some stuff from scripture. Although at this point, I also basically just read this one because I'm so used to the New King James that I can just read in the New King James as well. Uh, and I'm not always reading the Bible in some in-depth study thing. Um, even kind of kind of low level, just reading, getting verses that speak to whatever situation in my life, uh, what does the word say about what I am going through right now, uh, to get, you know, an accurate picture in my mind of, you know, what, what are my thoughts? What are my thoughts supposed to be on this situation? And I go to the word and I find that out. Um, what should I be feeling about this situation? I go to the word, I find that out. Even that might not necessarily be true study. So I guess it kind of also depends on what do you mean by study? Um, and so, it's something that you have to kind of figure out for yourself. Like, what are your goals? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Take it up with God. Like, what do you want to do? Um, and so for a lot of people, I think it is about having a quiet time with God. If you want to have a quiet time with God um, and just read and go closer to him, that is a little bit of a different thing than like in-depth Bible study. And so it's different. Is one more important than the other? I don't think so. I, I think like whatever gets you in the word is what you should be doing. Whichever translation you like, whichever translation gets you in the word, that's the translation that you should use. <laughs> that's my opinion. I think having um, access to the word is more important than forcing yourself to read some super hard to read translation just because somebody says 
that this is the only one that you're allowed to read. Um, that is my personal opinion on that. And obviously I know a lot of people will disagree. <laughs> Boy, will people disagree. Christians are good at getting into fights over the stupidest stuff. Let me tell you that that is one of the things that a lot of Christians excel at. Um, and so they are not, we are not perfect as a people. Um, Jesus was perfect. We are not. Um, and so anytime that you get into arguments over stuff like that, or a person is, if anytime a person is trying to limit another person's access to God, that's kind of where I want to hold my finger up and be like, actually, I, you know, Jesus came to remove all obstacles to, of access to God. And so if your access to God comes through the message translation, Go ahead and get yourself a message translation and read the crap out of that thing, okay? Read it all the time. That's actually my son, my my um my middle son Elliot. He is on the spectrum. The message is his translation. He is autistic. He loves the message translation. That's the one that brings it out for him, the one that he likes the most. Although recently, I will say he's um he's 16 now. He just expressed interest lately in getting a more literal translation so that he can do more in-depth study. And boy, does that like my mom heart just goes, Pew! and then you like have that moment where you're like, be cool, be cool, be cool. Don't get too excited. Don't be like, yes! <laughs> like, don't be like too excited. Don't let it all out. Just be like, oh, that's awesome. Which more literal translation do you think you're more interested in? We can go get you one of those. Like right this very second, like 15 minutes, like 15 years ago, like I would buy you another one. Like yesterday, let's go yesterday. Like, Maybe like sometime next week we can go and look and find you a translation. Just be super cool. And so, you know, it just sort of depends on what a person, but it's like, like starting where a person wants to start is so important. Just get them in the word and then God will lead them. Like he will lead them. Like, like, okay. So I just distracted myself. I've refilmed this so many times. I'm not going to refilm that because I think a lot of you, like, especially Christian parents, you can totally relate to what I'm talking about there. When God begins to open up the word and make it real for your kids, there's like almost nothing better than that. Uh, but, uh, that kind of comes to the next, uh, question is what is the purpose of Bible study, which I guess I was kind of covering just now in whether or not a literal translation is necessary. Um, oh no, no, no. Actually, I do have one thing I would really like to say specifically about studying in the word, especially if you're not using a literal translation. Um, if you get caught up on a certain phrase in a, in a verse, the way that your paraphrase translation may say it, um, it's happened to me even in the passion translation, I'll get super caught up in something and be like, I love that. I love the way that says that. And then you go to your essentially literal translation, look it up and see what does it say more closely to the original language. That way you can know for sure whether or not this thing that you love that you want to take now is like your new verse, your new doctrine or whatever. <laughs> it's like not really a new doctrine, but you know, it's like, this is a thing now that I am basing a lot of my conclusions on the word about because of this phrase. Don't do it until you've looked it up and make sure that that's actually what it really says in the original language, because you will find a lot of times these phrases get thrown in. And then in the context of the whole passage, yes, they can clarify the meaning of the whole passage, but they won't be actually literally what the word is saying right there. Um, and then also oftentimes with the backdrop of the paraphrase, having all of that extra clarification thrown in, meaning, um, you will find yourself more richly understanding what the original word said, but I would say don't, don't like run with a certain verse until you've made sure that the word actually literally says that. And that would be my only caveat to the, it doesn't matter what translation you use as long as you get into the word. That's my caveat. Okay. So make sure that it is accurate, but I still do believe that the paraphrase has its place. Um, if you just want to read and relax go get yourself some sort of paraphrase. But like I said, also the dynamic equivalent level of translation than NIV is um, also very readable, um, but it is definitely a lot closer to the original language. So something like that might work anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the question of what is the purpose of Bible study? And for me personally, I think the true purpose of Bible study is connecting to God. It's becoming intimate with him. It's getting to a place where you are led by him more than by anyone else or anything else in your life. Um, being intimately connected with God, I heard a great teacher saying once, it won't just change your life, it will change your day. 
Um, and I love that because it truly does just day to day. I have so many stories of the way that God has led me in little ways that has ended up being just so perfect later on. Um, which is why I learned to just listen when I'm led, even if it feels weird, I do the thing that I'm led to do. Um, kind of like this video, um, <laughs> because I realized that God is doing something that I am going to, to probably see the benefit later. And I might not ever see the benefit, but a lot of times it shows up. My life is completely saturated with stories of the little ways that I was led by God that just completely altered my experience of that day. You know, where I did something in the morning and then something came up in the afternoon and then like something I almost never do in the morning, some totally random thing. And then a thing comes up in the afternoon completely out of left field that I had no idea was coming. Um, and like all of a sudden I'm, I'm set. Like I'm, like, it's not even a big deal. Like it might have been something that would have been hard on me. Um, but because I did that thing in the morning, I, it's not even hard. Like I was prepared in advance for a thing I didn't even know was going to happen. That's the kind of stuff that happens to me all the time. Um, or just being led to go to a certain store where I'll find a thing that I've been wanting for a really long time at a really good price. Um, things like that. Um, and obviously that's like a, a tangible life benefit, but the real amazing benefit is the intimacy with God, the relationship with him. What is the real purpose? Like that's one of the great kind of side effects almost of being with God. Um, it's not like taking a medication that has a bunch of neg negative side effects. This is being in the presence of God and it's all positive side effects. <laughs> um, but it's the intimacy with him. It's um, being transformed into the image of his likeness, right? One of my favorite scriptures is we, as we behold him are transformed into the image of his likeness. It's by spending time with him. It's by beholding him, looking at him. The act of looking at him is transforming my inner self to be more like him. Um, and that it, and so like a, like a beautiful thing that happens like effortlessly. You just find yourself more at peace. You find yourself more full of joy. You find yourself more patient, um, without having to try, without telling yourself, I'm going to be joyful today, or I'm going to be patient today. Like you just end up being that way, spending time with God. The purpose for me personally, I believe of Bible study is to connect with God, become more intimate with God, um, and just know him better. It's not to increase my knowledge so that I can flex in arguments about the Bible. <laughs> That's not what it is. It's not like, so I can win arguments. And it isn't so that I can make myself look superior to another person because I know more about the word than they might. Um, that's like, if you, if your religion turns you into a jerk, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> like, it, it's like the more, it's like the more, you know, I, I feel too, it's like the more you realize you have to learn. And it, it's just like this beautiful thing that happens and absolutely increasing your knowledge of scripture is important so that you have a backdrop like a f firm foundation on which to, um, to base your life. Right. Um, I, I don't know if I said it in this take or a different one, but it's like, I'm going to the word and I'm saying, okay, what does the word say about my situation? Um, uh, what are the thoughts that I'm supposed to be thinking about this? What are the feelings that I'm supposed to be having about this? Um, not just allowing life to dictate the way that I think and feel about things, but allowing the word to transform me, um, that connection with God to transform me from the inside out. And then I can choose now to be patient, to be at peace, even when things are going crazy around me. Um, and then, yeah, that, gosh, I, I feel like that absolutely does, does fit on a prepping channel. How do you balance um, preparing for things that come and your faith. I think I have talked about that on the channel before. Maybe I should talk about it more. Um, but it's definitely not a, um, a passive stance. You take an active stance. <laughs> um, and yeah, things just sort of just have a tendency to work out somehow when God is involved. It just sort of all works. And it's not like you had to do anything. And that's, I think what my favorite thing is. It's all him. It's not me. It's him. Um, and so what are some of the advantages of having a physical Bible over a digital Bible? Um, so yeah, like one of the reasons my Bible looks like this, I really need to get a cover for it because I'm definitely not trying to do some Christian flex where I'm showing off, you know, how beaten up my Bible is. I, I do. I need to buy a cover. I'm going to go look for one. Actually, as soon as I'm off of this, this video, I'm going to go buy a cover for my Bible. Um, <clears throat> that's the solution. I've been wondering, see, like, like, how did I never think of that before?
Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Um, but I just was like literally talking about it and then I just feel like, oh, just buy a cover. Oh, what a solution. Cause I was like, how do I cover this? Can I like paint it? Can you do like a re covering? It's like, no, I just need to buy a cover. But anyway, the reason <clears throat> I love my physical Bible, this is over 11 years old now. Um, Adam bought it for me for my birthday in 2011, I believe. Yes, it was. It was for my birthday. Um, and so in 2011, I love this Bible. Um, it has seen me through all kinds of ups and downs through some of the most dramatic and crazy things I've ever been through in my life. Um, and it's full of highlights. It's full of notes. It's full of things that, um, that I thought of when I read something. And then even most recently, there was a time there is just in the last couple of weeks, I was going through something and I looked at a passage. I was looking up a specific passage for the specific instance I was facing in that moment. Um, but a little further down the page, there was another passage that was underlined and there was a little arrow and it just had a date. Um, and I recognized the date and just the date I knew what I was going through and the, in the moment when I wrote that date and now it was five years ago, seeing five years ago, this thing that was overwhelming and looming and ominous. And I was terrified. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was going through at the time surrounding my pregnancy with Sage, um, as a result of a, a pregnancy loss that I had had previously and things like that. But that verse, got me through that time and looking back and seeing the miracles that God worked and the amazing things that happened and how he worked everything out for my good and everything worked out for everyone's good and just remembering who he is and where he has brought me from like the word talks about that right like remember the form of remember where he has brought you from um remember the miracles that he did um that like even though the verse that I was looking up that day was good and it still was helpful, I was helped more by remembering the way that God brought me through that other situation um, than the the verse itself. And I don't know if that probably sounds like some really legalistic religious person could probably make that sound really bad. But that's I'm not saying that the word doesn't help, but it was like remembering, oh yeah, <laughs> God has really gotten me through a lot of really amazing, like amazingly difficult things. But looking at life and it's like, gosh, he's so good. He works everything out. And so I would not have had that experience if I was just looking it up on my phone or if I were replacing this Bible too soon. Um, this is like part Bible, part journal, honestly, at this point in my life. It is a cat catalog of my life and the blessings of, that God has brought me through. I can see my old highlights. There are times when I don't know what I want to read. I just don't know. And it's like, even I'm kind of caught up and I, I get tired and I'm sitting in my time with God. And I'm like, I don't know what to read. I don't even know what to do. So what I can do is just open up this Bible and I can see my past highlights. And I can read the things that I have highlighted in the past and remember why was I highlighting that? What what was going on in my life? Or even it brings me into deeper study. So for instance, like in Psalm uh, 21, right? Like I have this highlight in the middle of Psalm 21. And so that would, I'd read the highlight that I'd be led to read the whole thing. I might be led to read, um, you know, the one before and the one after, and then you end up going on a study. And that's because I had the highlights in my physical Bible. Um, Diana Koku, who is the sister of Minimal Mom, has a really great video too, discussing some other great advantages to a physical Bible over a digital one, including the fact that you retain more information with a physical uh, book, a physical thing versus a digital thing, which is something that I knew <laughs> because not that I have to know things before other people know them. <laughs> I'm not one of those people, but I just say I knew it because like, for instance, when my kids got switched to all laptops away from textbooks, I was doing a lot of research on that and realizing that's not necessarily the best thing uh, because you don't retain as much information. There's something about the scrolling specifically that I saw in the study that I had read at that time. And now I realize from a lot of what Diona Koku was talking about was um, that you end up when you're reading, you physically are mapping the book that you're reading. Your brain is like mapping the information. So it's easier for you to go find it again. And when you're reading something digital, there's no mapping that can happen. Um, and so you just retain more information from a physical book. But anyway, that book was, a that, that, that video was really good. So I will link that down below, but also for me as a very tactile person, um, and like at this point too, like I've studied this Bible for 11 years. 
I can, you know, if I know I want to look up a certain passage, I, you know, nine times out of 10, I can open. And if I'm not on the passage, like it's freakish actually how often I will open directly to the passage I'm looking for. I, if I'm not directly on that passage, I will be all, I will be very close <laughs> to where I want to be because at this point I don't have to like, look, I'll just like open boom. And I'll be right where I want to be because I've read this Bible for so long that I have that kind of tactile experience. And so, yeah, for me, it's, it's physical all the way. I can't do a digital Bible. I can't do that in church. I also feel like there's, there's, it's too easy to distract yourself. Um, certainly there's been times when I've like forgotten <laughs> and I look up at my Bible on my phone in church, but I hate doing that too, because I feel like you never know if somebody's actually reading the Bible or if they're getting distracted on like something else. Um, and I feel like nobody ever knows that about me either. I just, I don't know. I just really love the, the physical Bible. So many advantages to that. Um, it's just, th this is the Bible at this point. It's weird. It might feel weird, but like, like I said, cause this has been through with me through so much at this point. I don't know if it's like a grown up teddy bear. <laughs> what it is but there's part of me that feels comforted it's like an instant comfort just like just holding it and I don't always hold it here but I'm holding it here you know because I, you can't see if I'm holding it down here but just holding it in my hands it's like I feel I feel like the relaxation because it's like this is this is my bible I am who it says I am I can do what it says I can do I'm a little programmed at this point but I'm like this is my bible and it's my comfort, it's my strength, and it's the thing that gets me through. So that's that's what I want. Like I want well, my physical Bible. I don't want a digital thing because there's so much missing from the digital. I think the physical is so great. But that being said, if you don't have a physical Bible that you really love yet, um, definitely check out Bible Gateway and go through and like read read translations and see which one you think is gonna get you in the word the most and then get that Bible. Um, they can be expensive. So I definitely recommend testing them out before you buy them. Um, and you can do that for free on BibleGateway.com. So anyway, I think that that's basically everything that I had to say about that. Um, I was going to share some testimonies, but the video got pretty long. Um, and so I will save those for another time. A little bit of that it won't just change your life. It will change your day type thing. Um, and so here, well, actually, let me, I'll do one. We'll cut it off at 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'll do one. Um, last week, my son, uh, my older son, Thad, he got sick. He had a fever. I actually had no idea. He was going into the shower when I was coming out. And then I had to basically leave and I was gone. I was gone with my daughter for her swimming lessons. And then we went to Costco. I had no idea he was sick. But all of a sudden that morning, for whatever reason, and how I've been making smoothies for years now at this point, five, six, seven years, like even before I went vegan, smoothies were a thing for me. Um, all of a sudden that morning when I made a smoothie, I ended up with an extra entire cup and I don't normally have that much smoothie. And I was like, well, gosh, that's weird. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it for fat because I, I just leave it for him. And so I actually knocked and I poked my head into the bathroom and I was like, Hey honey, I made a bunch of extra smoothie. I'm going to leave it for you. And he goes, Oh, okay. That worked out. And I was like, Oh, okay, sweet. So I closed the door because I'm thinking he must need to leave and he doesn't have time to make breakfast, whatever that works out. Perfect. I left the smoothie on his desk and then I took Sage off to do swimming lessons and all the stuff that we do. Um, come to find, and then I went to Costco and I got like all kinds of stuff. I got a whole bunch of extra stuff that, that he really likes and kombucha specifically, um, and, and all that came home. My grandmother was at my house and I was like, why is my grandma at my house? Okay, well, <laughs> we'll see what's going on. Um, so sometimes she'll show up to like drop something off or whatever. She has a key, um, and she'll come in and, and do whatever. Um, and so I came in, but also I was out, Adam had texted me. He says, so how is Thad? And I'm like, what do you mean? How is Thad? What are you talking about? <laughs> and so I didn't get an answer before I went in. My grandma told me Thad is sick. It's like, I didn't know that he was sick. I had no clue. Nobody told me. I guess Adam assumed that Thad was going to tell me, but just sort of the way that we pass, you know, he's 21 at this point. A lot of times we are kind of passing like ships in the night. Like we don't even see each other. Um, and so, but it worked out. God took care of my son, right? He got my son a smoothie when I didn't even know he was sick. So he got a big green smoothie to drink. Um, to help him out, to give him all those antioxidants and all that immuno helping stuff randomly 
like seriously, I should get him on here to tell you that doesn't happen. Like if I make a smoothie for him, sure. But it doesn't happen that I end up with extra smoothie. I have got this worked out to a science at this point. I get one 24 ounce jar for myself and one eight ounce cup for my daughter. She and I share a smoothie and that's, but I ended up with an extra entire 24 ounce jar of smoothie. I have no clue to this point, to this, to this moment. Like I can't tell you exactly how that happened. It's the same smoothie I've been making for like six years. Um, but all of a sudden there was extra smoothie for my son. And then also all of a sudden my grandmother showed up and so she was helping. She was, she got him like emergency. She got him like all kinds of, she was taking care of him while I was off at Costco, not knowing that my son was sick. God sent somebody else to take care of my son. So it's like moments like that where it's like, he just has things taken care of from day to day. And then he's fine. My grandma's, nobody else got sick. Everyone's fine. Um, but yeah, like, like stuff just gets taken care of. Like and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful way to live. And that's just one, again, my life is saturated with stories like that. I don't know. It's just, everything just kind of works out. I, anyway, yeah. So that's all I have to say about all that. So hopefully you guys got something good out of that. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments down below anything that you'd like to say about anything. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye.